For devout Indians, everything that happens before marriage is just an insignificant phase. For them, real life only begins when they marry. In one of the best districts of New Delhi, Arpit, the son of a hotelier, is preparing for his wedding. The 27-year-old is pretty excited. Every single one of his relatives has traveled here for the occasion. Weddings, according to classical Hindu ritual, are family affairs. In India, the question as to who marries whom is not decided by the bridegroom. No, the entire clan has a say. In India, everyone has got a very big family. Like, uh, most of the people have a big family. Now the concept of nuclear family is coming in. So the family itself, it's a big grand affair which goes on, like for the wedding. And it's like a whole week of functions. There are too many customs, like in Hindu wedding itself. You begin with, uh, you meet a family and you will decide, okay, I want to marry this girl. On her wedding day, the bride, Ankita, waits in her parents' home 30 kilometers away from that of her bridegroom. She didn't have any say in the choice of her husband either. She knows that after the wedding, she will live with Arpit and his parents. She will then belong to the groom's family. Like the new family and, you know, new sisters, new parents, new set of parents. It, it's a little bit scary, but you come to terms with it because you've seen your family members like go through it. It's exciting, but it's very, you know, like it's very scary also at the same time. Meanwhile, Arpit is arranging the party for the evening in a hotel in New Delhi, one of many big events. He doesn't mind the fact that his parents selected his bride for him. The question as to whether the bride and bridegroom will like and find each other attractive is seldom asked. In most of the cases in India, like the elders involved and if the families are right for each other, they get married. But being lucky, my parents gave me some time and her parents as well to actually, like, if you want to spend the life together, you need some time to know each other and, you know, get compatible. A family made us introduce and we exchanged numbers, we got to know each other. Then we went forward for the decision, yeah. The bride and groom were able to meet several times before the wedding, but this is seldom the case in India. At their first meeting, Arpit and Ankita didn't really hit it off, but then they got used to each other, and finally, they even got to like each other. It took us a long time. It took us almost a year. If he hadn't proposed, I wouldn't have married him. But it would never have occurred to Ankita to reject the bridegroom chosen for her. Like most other Hindu women, she accepts, without complaint, her own passive role and the dominance of the family. If you don't find a boy, you know your parents will. And since they know you the best for like 25, 24 years, you can trust them on their choice. It's not like you just go and select a groom. There's like a whole process to it. You meet the family, you do a background check, you ask 30, 40 people about the family, you ask about the boy, and then it's only after that that you decide. A Hindu bride enters marriage a virgin. That is both a religious and social must. In India, it's considered, it's still not an open thing. It's still considered really bad. Like, it's, it's not good to do it before wedding. A girl is supposed to remain a virgin. She should remain a virgin. That's what everyone thinks. The same applies for Hindu women from all social strata. They learn very early on that sexual contact before marriage must be avoided at all costs. Yes, uh, virginity for, for young women is very much a part of uh, the Hindu religious texts. Issue of child marriages comes from that because it is said that a woman should be, or a girl should be married immediately after her first menstruation, when she can conceive, so as not to have the stigma, because one should also see that Hinduism is also very, very sensitive to the power of sexuality, of human sexuality. So they say, we know how powerful it is, so if she's not married off, it is very likely liable that if she remains unmarried for a young, for some years after puberty and all, that she will, so to say, go astray, will have sex. And that is terrible, so we should, you should get her married uh, as early as possible. 
The bridegroom should also be a virgin when he marries. Hindu mythology says that even the mighty god Shiva had to wait until after his wedding before having sexual intercourse with his beloved Parvati. The same should apply for Arpit. He prefers to leave the question open as to whether he has had affairs before marriage. I believe everyone has a past and you actually meet someone for the present and to live for the future rather than like discussing someone's past and I don't know. It isn't usual in India to speak openly about sexuality, although erotic images are certainly freely in evidence, even if they are only advertisements for fruit juice. There's a kind of a very crackling sexual energy all over, which you see in kind of Bollywood movies and the dances, etc., part of it. But it has to be controlled in public in, uh, in its, uh, in its uh, manifestations. This used to be different. In the history of Hinduism, there have always been highly erotic pictures in connection with religion. The temples of Kachural from the 11th century are the most well-known example. The famous Kama Sutra originated a few centuries earlier. There has always been the eroticism in the Indian uh, tradition. In fact, one of the oldest texts, Brihat Samhita, says uh, uh, that the whole creation from the creator to the smallest worm is based on the union of male and female, so why should we be ashamed of it? And in Hinduism, there has always been a tension between two extreme positions, divine union on the one hand and religious asceticism on the other. In the 11th century, when the temples of Kachural were created, the idea of erotic ecstasy was at its peak. After 11th, 12th century, the, the ascetic or the priestly comes up again. And that comes much stronger with British colonialism. Because British colonialism comes with Victorian values. And in Victorian values, if you, I mean, that's not too long ago. They, in England, they used to even cover the legs of chairs uh, because these were legs, so they covered them with the cloth. One senses this a little with Arpit and his bride. Modern Hindu society keeps itself covered up in public. Love and sex belong behind closed doors. In Hindu culture, it's fun. Like, I consider myself it's better to, you know, that love actually becomes, starts after marriage. <laughs> New Delhi. Arpit dances happily at one of the many parties before the wedding. One of the last opportunities to enjoy himself as a single man. He makes the most of this time and celebrates with his pals. As a single person, obviously, it was fun. And uh, it was enjoyable and, you know, you're free. You, even like, okay, you are family, but Still, you can, you know, live out your life. Now I feel like, you know, you have added responsibility. That's the end of any prenuptial affairs. Now he can admit it. Yes, he did have girlfriends before marriage. You're bound to have affairs in that age, and uh, whether you're 21 or whether you're 22, that's uh, it. one gets in love. Even in India, it's not against Hindu culture or any, it's not against any culture to actually have a girlfriend. Amongst Hindus, there's a great distinction between men and women. Even today, when choosing a wife, the dowry still plays an important part. Although it's forbidden by law, it is still practiced in all stratas of society. Furthermore, as almost everywhere, what men are allowed to do is not tolerated for women, especially when it comes to sexual morality. Sexual pleasure was always allowed to the male and not to the female outside, outside marriage. That is also has a, has a long history, uh, that in marriage, as if that is, then that is the only way where the woman is supposed to have the sexual pleasure. The marital bed has been prepared. The day of the last wedding ceremony has arrived. Now the strict rituals have to be followed even more closely. Mm -hmm. 
Arpit submits to everything. He knows what he owes to his family. Now comes the serious part. According to a custom popular throughout India, the bridegroom rides to the temple on horseback. The noisy procession is an expression of his esteem for the bride. Prayers are said in the temple to the gods Vishnu and Lakshmi. ये तो विष्णु भगवान बन गया है लक्ष्मी तो सभी हमारे दोनों समाज लड़का लड़की का आपस में दोनों की पूजा करते हैं और ऊपर वाले का स्वरूप मान के उनकी पूजा करते हैं इन हिंदू मिस्टिसिज्म सेक्स इज ऑलवेज अ स्पिरिचुअल एक्ट द मेल एंड फीमेल सेक्सुअल ऑर्गन्स योनि एंड लिंगम आर वर्शिपड इन द टेंपल दे सिंबलाइज डिवाइन यूनियन That sexuality in the Hindu religious tradition is not just copulation. It is not just sleeping together. It is much, much more than that. That you are playing with the fire of creation. It is something sacred because it is taking part in that ritual of creation, which underlies the universe itself. And that is what uh, often the what would say the traditional Hindus, conservative Hindus, look very askance at the West. That here, there, it has become a game. The last phase of the ceremony begins. Just a few decades ago, this was when the bride and groom met for the first time. Arpit and Ankita belong to the first generation of Hindus who were allowed to get to know each other before the wedding. The priest recites incantations and special phrases for good luck, and he also calls upon the gods to bless the couple with a fulfilled sexual life together. तो उसमें मुख्य प्रधान एक नारी होते सबसे महान नारी जो है उसे हम उसका संतुलन खो जाते हैं सुषमा नारी कहते हैं उसे सुषमा या इनको सुना लेना सुषमा नारी है वो हमारा केंद्र बिंदु जो मैं टीका लगा रहा ना और स्त्रियां बिंदी लगाती है ना वो क्यों लगाती है ये केंद्र बिंदु है Arpit and Ankita are now man and wife. Arpit is greatly looking forward to their wedding night. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But uh, it's better that I would stay in a hotel and just be together with her rather than the hosh posh of the house like just be ourselves. Many of the world religions young believers still abide by the sexual laws of their culture and accept the limitations on their freedom to a greater or lesser degree. Sex before marriage is not permitted in any religion except for young Protestants. They have to learn how to deal with this freedom in a responsible way. Yeah.